In Creo Parametric, you can configure a wide variety of different section views in drawings. In a previous video, we took a look at full, half, local, and full and local cross sections. In this video, we'll take a look at the other 2D cross sections for full aligned and full unfold. Let's start out with full aligned. I'm going to use this part over here, so I will click on it and then use the open icon from the mini toolbar to open it up in its own separate window. For the other options for section views, you're going to use offset cross sections. You're going to use cross sections that don't aren't defined by a single plane. To do that, let's go to the View tab over here. From the Section drop-down, we can choose to create an offset cross-section. And for the Full Aligned option on Drawing Views, you're going to use non-planar sections in the offset section. Let me show you what I mean by that. In this particular part, I want to create a section that goes vertical and then to the center over here and then down through the middle of this particular part. And what will help me is if I create a datum axis. And I know that I'm going to need an axis later on for the drawing view, so I might as well create one now. So I will select this cylindrical surface, and then from the mini toolbar, I can choose to create a datum axis. Now I have it in there. It is A underscore 26. Let me turn on my axis display, and there you can see it. Let's create our offset section. I'll go to the Section drop-down and then choose Offset Section. This requires a sketch, and I don't have one right now, so I can define it inside of the cross-section. So I'm going to choose to sketch on this surface, and then for the orientation, I'm going to choose, make sure that, that this surface faces the top of the screen. Now I will click on the Sketch button, and it takes me into sketch mode. Let's go to our sketch orientation. And I have some sketch references automatically selected for me. Let's go to the references in here, and I want to make sure that I get this A26 axis in there so I can lock into it. Let's also grab this particular surface, and eh, just for safety, I'm going to grab this surface as well. Let's hit the Solve button and then close out of here. And my shape is going to be a bunch of lines. So I can start off a line over here and then drag it up over here. And you can dimension these if you want to. I'm just going to leave this at a big value. Or if you wanted to, you could use Delete Segment and just trim it right to the model geometry if you want. Let's create another line. It'll go from here, and I'll let it snap to the midpoint of that. Is that what I want? That should be good. So that is good for that one. Now that I'm done, I will hit the check mark to get out of sketch mode. And so there you see a preview of the section that we're getting. If I wanted to be on the other side, I'll just use the flip button. And this is the actual section that I want. Let's go to the hatching, turn on the display of that, and I'll go to properties. Let's change the name of this to section A and hit the check mark. I like to edit my hatching right here in the model, so let's right click on there and choose the edit hatch option. Usually I just make it denser so that you can see it, then click the OK button. So that is good for my cross section. Let's now turn or deactivate it and turn off the display. Uh, oops, wrong one. Turn off the display of the hatching. So that's good. We're back to the way that we were before. Let's use the window drop down to get back to a drawing over here. And before I create a new sheet for that particular part, I'm going to add that model to the drawing. And that's generally a recommended practice for multi-model drawings. Add the model first and then put in the sheet. This is the number of that particular part. Let me select it and then click the Open button. And then Done Return out of the Menu Manager. To create a new sheet, you can use the new sheet icon there, or you could use this button. Now we are on sheet number two. 
let's create a new general view. And I'm going to use no combined state. Let's pick about over here to place it on the drawing sheet. And let's see what the front view looks like. Do I want that one? Yep, that one looks good over here. Let's go to the scale and let's use a bigger scale, something that you can see. Let's use a value of 0.5 and click the OK button. And that is good for that one. Let's change the sheet scale while we're at it. And I don't need this note, so I will select it and then use the delete command and just going to reposition it over here. So here is my front view. Now I'm going to create a projection view of this one. So let's click on it with the left mouse button and then use the projection view icon and create a projection view out over to the side over here. So that is good for the projection view. Now I will double click on it and go to the sections command. Let's put in a 2D cross section. I'll hit the plus sign and there's our section A. This time I'm just going to leave it as a full section and click the apply button. And so that way you can see what it looks like over here. The reason I'm doing this is so that I can contrast it with the full aligned option as well. Let's uh, move everything over, I'm running out of sheet a little bit. Just want to get the other view, same projection view over here. So let's select this view and then projection and position it right about over here next to the other one and then double click on it. Now we can go to sections over here. I'm going to do a 2D section again and I'll hit the plus sign, select section A, but instead of full, you have the option to do half, one side or the other side of a datum plane local. But now we have the option over here for full aligned. And I'll select that one and it asks me for a reference axis and I'm going to use the model tree to select the axis that I created in the part. And we can hit the apply button. And so you'll notice that it's, again it sort of like unfolds it about that axis over there. So you'll notice that it's longer than the view over to the right. And let's click in the arrow display field and select this view and then hit the apply button. And that way we get our cutting arrows for the A section in there. And so I always warn people, be very careful when you're using the full aligned or full unfolded options because they can actually confuse people in terms of the net result in there. So there we have the full aligned. Let's take a look at doing the full unfolded option. And I'll go to a different part over here. And I'm going to create another offset cross section. And it's going to consist of a bunch of planar sections. The one that I did before for the, for the full and lined, it was a couple of lines at an angle to each other. So let's go about doing this and I'm going to create an offset cross section that slices through this feature over here, goes down the middle and then slices through this one over there. So let's go to the view tab and then section, offset section. Again, we need a sketch. Let's hit the define button. I'm going to sketch on this surface and let's choose this surface to face the top of the screen. And I'll click the sketch button. Let's go to, actually before we go to our sketch orientation, I'm going to add in a bunch of sketch references. Let me grab the, this one, oh, come here. Ah oh, well, I'll grab that edge. Yeah. Let's grab this cylindrical surface there. I really want this cylindrical surface over there. And let's see, I also want to slice through this one over here. Let me turn on my axis display. Let me go to my layers, unhide my axis layers. Now we got now I've got better references that I want to use. So let's grab this axis over here as a reference and grab this axis as a reference. Let me get rid of that edge. 
as one of my references. All right, so that is good. Let's click the solve button. Let's go to our sketch view. And in this particular case, I am just going to use a bunch of lines that extend beyond the part. Oops, looks like I am, this particular reference is not going through these different holes. Let's do that as well. Let's go back to the references and let's see, I'm guessing that one I don't want. Let's now add in this particular axis as a reference. And to help me sketch, I'm just going to throw in a vertical center line, doing whatever I need to do in order to make what I want. And I don't think I need to see my axes anymore. So now let's do our three lines. Let's do a line from here to there, and then up through here, and then out over there. So that is good. Again, I'm not going to change the dimensions. Let's right click and then choose the check mark to get out of sketch mode. And it shows us the side or the part that it's keeping. Again, I could flip it if I wanted to retain the other side. And I decide that, you know what, this is actually what I want to keep. Let me go down to the bottom of the model tree. I don't have any sections. Let's go to here and choose to call this section A. Let's turn on the display of hatching and hit the check mark. Let me go to the section and I'm not happy with the hatching. So once again, I will right click on the cross section, use the edit hatching and let's get the lines but quite a bit denser inside of there and click the OK button. So that is good in here. Let me go back to the model tab. I want to see if I have a view set up for my front view and I do not. Let's deactivate the cross section and turn off the display of the hatching. And let's see for my first view that I want to use, I'm going to set up Let's have a front view sort of like this. So I will choose to go to the saved views list. Oh, I actually do have a view called front. Yep, that is good. I will use that for my first view on the drawing. Let's go back to my drawing. And I'm going to once again add another drawing model, add model. And let me go to, oops, my working directory and select the valve cover. So now that is the active part. We can hit done return out of the menu manager. I'll use the new sheet icon this time. Now let's create our first view. I will hold down the right mouse button and choose general view. And I'll use no combined state. Let's left click to place the first view there. This one is going to be a front view. Let me change the scale. Uh, let's use yeah, let's use a scale of 0.5 and hit the OK button. Let me create a couple of projection views, a projection view to the top and a projection view to the side. And let's grab this over here and drag it down and grab this one and drag it down. Now let's see, for the view that I want to display the section in, uh, I want to display it in, let's see, let's start off with, actually it might be the front view that I want the uh, section to appear in. Let's try doing it in there. I will double click on the view. Let's go to the sections category, to the cross section, and I'll hit the plus sign. And yep, this, one's the one, this is one that is appropriate for the cross section. Right now I'm using the full option and I will click the apply button and OK. And you can see how the cross section looks. If I right click on this view, I can choose add arrows. And let's put the arrows in the top view. And so that way you can see how it cuts through the model over here. Let's actually get rid of this view. I'll select it and hit delete. I'm going to create another front view, but this time I'm going to use a full unfolded cross section. We can see the comparison between the two views. So I will right click, general view, no combined state. 
Let's place it right about over here. Let's use the saved view called front. I'll hit the apply button. And for the scale, let's change it so that's using the same scale as the other view, 0.5. And here I'll actually use the alignment command. Oh, um, yes, I want to apply the changes. Uh, I almost never use the alignment option, but since they're the same view, let's align these two views together and hit the apply button. That way it's just so that they are even with each other. So here you see the front view. I'm going to click OK out of here. So we've got section AA displayed in this particular view, but it's just a full section. Let's take a look at what happens when we use the full unfold option. I'll double click on the view. Let's go to sections and do a 2D section again. I'll hit the plus sign and choose A, and I'll hit the apply button first. So right now these two views look the same. If I go to the drop down, we have the option to do half, local, and here's the one that we haven't used before, the full unfold option. I'll select it and hit the apply button, and whoa, now the view looks much different than the previous ones. Let me click OK out of here and turn off my datum plane, or repaint so that we get the datum plane display. And now you'll notice that it goes through the section here. It shows, let's see, it goes through here and then follows along the definition of the sketch and then through over here. And so even though these were both front views and they're using sections, this is a full and this is a full unfold. And it looks like this one even got turned upside down. So again, there's a, a big difference when you're using the full aligned and full unfold options for those offset cross sections with planar and non-planar sketches. I hope you enjoyed this video. For more information, please visit www.creowindchill.com. If you learned something from this video, please give it a thumbs up. And if you like this video, please click the subscribe button to be informed when new videos are uploaded. Thank you very much.